I have a new this. This is a cheap and cheerful voice recorder module and this is its storage which is a small flash chip but I thought it would be interesting to try and dump that flash chip and it immediately fails to detect the chip. So what I'm going to do is try and solder some actual pins onto that but still nothing. Now I do have a plan C. Okay so oh well that was easy. And now it's reading. Uh, of course, the cheap and nasty device is now non-functional. Well, I can just solder this back on. That's quite straightforward. But it would be nice to be able to put the device on and off in order to play with it. But what I could do is to take some header sockets and solder these on here these so i can do the same trick with bending the pins together and this will uh solder onto these terminals and then i can plug this thing into them of course i need eight so Grab the corner cutters. Okay, so that's supposed to be about the same as this, and the pins are roughly in the right place. Uh, the spacing between the uh, yeah that's not going to work uh, I can just about get the spacing right by bending the pins like this but the problem is that these big chunky connectors butt up against the battery holder here. Oh yes, and for fun, let's try putting the battery back in and seeing what happens. So playback. Nothing, play. Uh, let's record rather. Yep. The beep means it's starting to record, and normally you press it again and get a double beep, but it's clearly failing to talk to the flash chip and just giving up. It's crashing. If there was any tracing, it would be dumping error messages. Okay, let's try some bits of wire then, shall we? Okay, so now we take our chip connector, uh, this one plugs in this side, this one plugs in this side, like so. Uh, let's put the battery in. Let me push the button. And nothing happens. 
So chances are that we've bridged a couple of lines. So let's just get the meter out and test this. No, that was just me being clumsy. Okay, well, there doesn't seem to be any obvious bridges. So, is it wired up correctly? So, pin one is going to hopefully the right place. Pin two to hopefully the right place. Uh, pin four is on the right pin, as is pin three. Whereas for the other side, yes, yes, yes. So it should work. So So that's the same behavior we had before with the flash chip disconnected. It's failing to talk to the flash chip and is just giving up in disgust. So what could we have gone got wrong? Well, shorting pins for a start. Uh, but we have just tested that. So could I have shorted them to something else? There are a few components which could be uh, getting in the way. The other option is bad solder joints. Um, I think it's probably time for the oscilloscope again. Okay, here we are. And if I run it and go, we get a capture, but it looks kind of terrible. And I'm wondering whether I actually have stray capacitance in these wires. Uh, that will cause everything to go horribly wrong. If this is trying to push 8 megahertz signals across that. Let's just try record instead. Yeah. Um, I... Don't know the order actually. I didn't plug them in the same way round as before. So, uh, channel one that's yellow should be chip select actually. But that's not. There's a little bit of a glitch here. But I don't believe it signifies anything. So here you get four pulses. This is probably the clock now. And the data the data is distinctly poor quality, which could be the the long wires. The 
Chip is de definitely not responding. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah, you can see the way that this is just sort of slewing up. I think that this is Mozzie, uh, Master Out Slave In. This is the processor talking to the flash chip, which this must be the response. Possibly this is just not connected properly. So that is channel two. That is this wire. Which, just to make sure that hooked on. Um, is it noticeably noisier than the others? I think it could be. So let's take a closer look and hook all this stuff. This is why I use test clips, you see. Do we actually have a decent connection? The pad down here looks all right, I have to say. So that's this one. Connecting to here. Looks all right to me. I think the wires might just be too long. Which is a shame as I'd have to resolder everything. Although now I think of it, Remember that pin I didn't hook up? This is hold. It appears to turn everything off on the chip. Now, if that is floating low to make it asserted, then that means the chip will just not be responding, which is what we're seeing here. So let me just actually try uh, bridging that, just to tie it to um power the way it was originally and let's see what happens yeah. losing stuff all over This is clumsy as hell. I need to try and solder this on without losing the wire. Like that. Never mind. Now I could solder this on to here. If I can make it stay put. Ah, come on. It's just too springy. Also, important safety tip, don't try to stabilize the soldering iron by resting it on your finger. I've actually done that once. It didn't work well. Okay, so, oh, I actually forgot to turn that off. So uh, let's see how that behaves now. No, no change. 
It's still just refusing to talk to it. Well, I will admit to being kind of stumped. I'll do some investigation offline. Uh, this is a horrible tangle. And see what I come up with. There has been a breakthrough. Watch this. Testing, one, two, three. So the secret was that by extending the wires to the flash chip, I also needed to add in a decoupling capacitor that is a simple 0.1 microfarad electrolytic connected between the power and ground lines of the flash chip. And if I trigger another capture, uh, it failed to trigger at the right place. Let's do that again. There we go. So that you can see that we now get rather less glitchy uh, signals. However, the clock, which is the blue one, is not really what I would call square. And there's some um, ringing there when the clock stops. However, it appears both the processor and the SBI chip are capable of decoding the resulting signal, so that's fine. Uh, probably what this needs is... I should, I should remove some of these probes now. Probably what this needs is a capacitor with shorter leads, because it's still quite a long way from the actual chip. But now the thing is actually working, which is great, and it records too. Testing. So, that is good. Right, well, there is one more thing which I want to do, which is I want to take the chip out of the ZIF socket, which is actually straightforward, and now it won't work anymore. Who would have thought? Oh, it still thinks it's recording, though. Hasn't gone anywhere. Yes. Um, since I have this kit containing a SOIC adapter, I'm actually going to stick this thing on the adapter. That means I won't have to use this big bulky ZIF socket. Uh, and it'll also give me some much needed practice in soldering these SOIC uh, chips onto things. So, let me get the last bit out of the bag. <laughs> Come on. There we go. So I will clear this mess off my desk and uh, get set up for doing that. All right. So what I'm going to do is to solder the chip onto this adapter board. Uh, in fact, the pin spacing is incorrect. Good, it's got the right spacing in this side. So I'm going to solder the chip onto this adapter board by placing it approximately here. I haven't actually done this before. Uh, I'm going to use the hot air gun for that. So, um, one option is to use solder paste, and I don't have any. You basically, it's uh, it's solder in a sort of goopy flux-like matrix, which you spread onto the pads, and then you heat it up, and it melts into actual solder. But I'm going to have to use actual solder, so I'm just going to tin these pads. And this should be all the solder we need. Come 
like so. Just check that for bridges. Now that looks fine. And then we're going to take the chip and line it up carefully on the pads. which it will now will not go down because the the solder on the pads is lumpy. That was almost correct. So we get out the hot air gun, which you can hear start up. It gets up to temperature and then we just toast it. And it should just drop into place, except it hasn't because it's gone askew. So let's just take that off again. Come on. Okay, let's melt the solder. Okay, this is not working. Um, I need... I need it to be placed more accurately on the pads. So let's try it like that and apply some... a little bit of pressure to make it go down Okay, that's skew. Wow, this is fiddly. Until I need the practice. Okay, um, let's clean this solder off and try this again. Let's make it a bit less lumpy. That looks more like it. Okay, so... Apply a little bit of pressure. This is just going to try and keep the chip in place. Although, putting the tweezers onto the chip does seem to knock it off. Okay. Now toast it. Maybe I don't want any pressure. Let's try a little more distance. Because I just want it to drop down. Okay, I can see the flux melting. that done. Ouch. To nobody's great surprise, it's quite hot. But yeah, that seems to have worked. 
So there is only one bit left to do, which is to solder the legs on, and I'm just going to get a little bit of help to do that. So the help consists of this same piece of breadboard that I was using before. All we do is we push the two bits of header pins through the board, and then mount that on the breadboard and that will keep everything upright. So this is just a really straightforward piece of through hole pins. Ah, that was the hot air gun finally powering down. I don't know how much of that came over on the camera. Okay. So now we should have a nice dip adapter containing a two megabyte flash chip. So let's get this thing out. Um, pin one is there. So we remove the ZIF socket. Now it goes this way up. Like so. Does it play back? No, it does not. That could be because it's backwards. Yes, yeah, so pin one should be here. It should be this way up. This way around, which I think was the way I had it. Right, it's not recording, so it's failing to talk to the flash chip. Let's double check the continuity, because it may be that. It's not the right way around. So this is pin one of the chip. It goes there. Yeah. 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 Yes, and yes, okay. So the adapter works. So why is it not talking to the chip? Well, the answer is very likely going to be to do with that decoupling capacitor. And this will probably need to be changed to something bigger or smaller. Uh, because this thing is going to have weird characteristics which this little adapter will not have. So let's take this off. Does that make a difference? No. And, okay, um, I'll have to experiment with a few different capacitors and see what comes out. That was annoying. So after some debugging, I think I've got a handle on what's going on. This included getting all the bloody probes out again. But if I do continuity test, from this pin 
to the corresponding pin here. You should be able to hear that beeping. However, if I go up here, there's no connection and that is clock. So nothing will work unless that's soldered up. So I think that that's just a dodgy solder joint. So let's just reflow that with the soldering iron. Like so. Let's try that again. So it's this one. To here. Okay. So let's stick the battery back in. Push the button and Nothing. Fantastic. So the adapter goes this way up. And in fact, This thing is now unplugged, but it will form a quite useful holder. So this should get continuity here, here, and nowhere else. Okay, so this is pin one, so this should go here. Interesting. Okay, let's try it the right way around this time. This is pin one. That should go here. And it's not, no, it should go here. <laughs> the one with the dot in it, yes. So the solder gets contact, the leg gets contact. Solder, leg. Solder, leg. Solder, leg. Uh, be here. Solder, leg. Solder, leg. Solder, leg. Solder. Huh. Now I'm sure I tested this previously and that worked. Okay. Reflow it. Let's give that another go. Solder, leg. Okay. All right. We're going to plug it back into here. Now, pin one is so it goes this way round. Alright, if you push the button and nothing. Uh, no beeps at all, so I think I may have plugged this in backwards. Yes, I did. It goes this way round. It really doesn't help that the chip is fastened to the adapter at 90 degrees to the adapter pinout. Okay.
Nothing. It's possible I managed to fry it somehow. Uh, let's try that in the EEPROM programmer again. Okay, so we drop the thing in here, run the test. Okay, it has correctly detected the device. But it hasn't read anything. Oh yes, because I need to tell it it's a uh, 25F, no. I need to tell it it's a uh, PN25F16B at Zoic 8. Okay. Yes, we want it to go ahead. Right, it's reading. The chip is fine. So it's something to do with the way that uh, this board is talking to it that's making it go wrong. I'll just wait for this to finish so that I can take a quick look at the hex dump. Just to make it look, see if it looks sane, which it does. Problem solved. Yeah, oh, I took this off and started working again. So clearly, the characteristics of this ZIF adapter are so different from the, this that this requires the decoupling capacitor, but this mustn't have one. That is weird. I am very clearly going to need to learn more about decoupling capacitors. Um, yeah, so that's all kind of strange. Anyway, that has been quite successful. I have done a number of nasty bodgers to this thing and it now still works. More or less. Well, as, as well as it ever did. There's some rather useful bits I can pull off this, such as I now have a handy two megabyte flash chip and a dip socket. There's a bad microphone. There's some button cells. Uh, so I think that when the real hardware that I actually want to experiment with shows up, I will be in a reasonably good place to uh, figure out how it works. Hello, what's this? Uh, was this wire important? Hey, look. Apparently it wasn't. It's... Um, <laughs> it's the power supply for the chip. Uh, oops. That should go on here. Was this what was causing the problem? Hey, look. We don't need to no, no, apparently that was it. Um, it was just a capacitor that wasn't wanted. And it's getting enough parasitic power through its data lines to work fine. Well, I thought that was entertainingly random. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments.